Good morning. good morning. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. It is so good to see everyone. Welcome to all our visitors as we prepare our hearts for the birth of the Christ child. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious, loving God, Lord, we come together, we gather together to worship your holy name. And Lord, we come this week, Lord, we come with broken hearts, Lord, we come with worries, we come with questions, but Lord, even in the midst of all of our questions, we come proclaiming your goodness, God, proclaiming that you are here, that you dwell with us, that you are Emmanuel, God with us, not God far away, but God with us. And Lord, we have seen you in the midst of the tragedy, of the chaos. Lord, your presence has been made known. So gracious God, we continue to pray for our community and our surrounding areas. Lord, our hearts continue to groan with words too deep to speak. But Lord, we give you thanks that you are a God that can read tears. God, that you know what we but is behind our fist in our anger. God, we give you thanks that you see our hearts. Lord, we give you thanks that you bottle our tears. So God, we come today to praise you, to praise your name, to glorify your name, and to give thanks that you loved us so much that you took on flesh. You took on flesh and you dealt with everything that we deal with, You've dealt with it, Jesus, so you know what it's like. So, Jesus, we thank you for your love, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hear these words. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. In those days Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, she left the child left in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you, young women, 
and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear me. From generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from, from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, his remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Mary faced with an incomprehensible burden and gift, ran to cousin Elizabeth's house, looking for someone who knew a little of what she was going through, looking for a place to hide until the reality of her condition could become something real. And she received a blessing. The prophet Micah spoke of a blessing coming to an unexpected place, an unassuming town, yet by God's grace would become the means through which God would bless the whole world. Bethlehem, the little town of blessing, we seek a blessing. We light these candles, the candle of hope, of peace, of joy, and of today, love as a sign that we know blessing and we know waiting for blessing to be felt and lived. We light these candles as a sign that we still seek a blessing. It's time to go home. Our first lesson, Genesis 22 and verses 15 to 18. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies. And by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. Please stand and join us now as we sing our first curl this morning and as the kids come forward to help lead us. And any other kids out there who want to come up and join us, come on. We're going to start out with Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
our second lesson, Luke 2 and verses 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went down from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child. And she gave birth to her first son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Our third lesson comes from Luke 2 and verses 8 through 14. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors.
Our fourth lesson is from Luke 2 and verses 15 through 18. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told. The fifth lesson is from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 and 6 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. 
For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Our sixth lesson is from John 1 and verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it.
Our seventh lesson is from John 1 and verses 6 through 14. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Are you excited? Yes. I am so excited. So, I've been thinking, during Christmas time, all sorts of stuff shows up.
that we normally don't have around. Can you name one thing that shows up at your house that's normally not there? Presents. Oh, <laughs> hey, you're, that's what I was thinking too. What is it? Candy. Candy. Anything else? A Christmas tree. A Christmas tree. That's the one I was thinking about. Anything else? Um, the elf. The elf. That's, you got another one? Anything else? One more. Um, getting toys. Okay, getting toys. That's right. Well, at Christmas, there's lots of stuff that shows up that's normally not there. At home, we usually have a Christmas tree. Here at church, that's a Chrismond tree because each one of those little ornaments on there is a symbol or something that represents Jesus. Isn't that cool? And there's all sorts of other stuff. The reason it's green is because Jesus lives forever, and that kind of tree never turns any other colors and never loses its leaves. So there's lots of stuff. Hang on just a minute. An evergreen. That's right. You're so smart. She beat you to it. Sorry. Okay, well, there's something else that shows up. Ponzetta show up at Christmas time too, but these show up. What's this? See if you can tell. A candy cane. So the cool thing about the candy cane is what it's shaped like. What is it shaped like? What's this? What's this, Asher? What shape is it? A hook. It's shaped like a hook. So there's a couple of different things we can think about. How else is it shaped? If you flip it upside down, it's a J. It's a J. Whose name starts with J? Jesus. How cool is that? What did Jesus' best buddies that he hung out with? They were the guys that went out in boats and did what? Fishermen. They were fishermen. What else does that look like? A fish hook. Okay. What else do we think it looks like? One more thing it looks like. What do you think, Asher? You got it? A R. A <laughs> will. <Yeah>, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> what? One more guess. What do you think? It kind of looks like um, a hook that people have fish. That's right. Well, another thing, the thing is that we're supposed to think of first is that um, the first people to be told about Jesus' birth were these guys out in the field with all these sheep. What are they called? What are they called? Farmers. Shepherd men. She shepherd men. They're shepherd men. Shepherds. So, so what we're supposed to think of, or one of the things we're supposed to think of, is that our candy cane looks like a shepherd's crook. And the sh it was, looks like a shepherd's cook because the shepherd sometimes had to help his sheep. And sometimes he helped them by grabbing onto them and yanking them away from danger. You can keep that one if you want to, buddy. Okay. So, and sometimes we think of Jesus and we hear of Jesus as the great shepherd who takes care of all of us like the shepherds take care of their sheep. So, long, long ago, there was this guy who was trying to teach kids in the choir and he needed them to be quiet in between practicing parts with other people. Scott should know because we were kind of hard practicing our parts too. And the candy that this choir guy made was shaped like this to keep those kids quiet when he was practicing with different groups of kids. And it's white because Jesus is perfect and doesn't have any sin, right? Why do you think it might have red stripes? Because of Jesus' blood. Because of Jesus' death on the cross, right? So when you look at a candy cane, are you just going to think about the fact that these are cool and we get them at Christmas? No, we're going to remember that it represents a lot of stuff about Jesus, right? It's the shepherd crook. It's the J for Jesus. It's white for the fact that Jesus had no sin and we're trying really hard to be like that. And it's red because of Jesus' death on the cross for us, right? Okay, good job, guys. So what do we say to the congregation?
today we have heard the Christmas story. We've heard the nativity story. If you remember, there was a part in the story, probably familiar, probably we look over it every year, but there's a part where it says that they had to go to Bethlehem and she gave birth and laid her baby in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. Everybody know that part of the story? Amen? Amen. Okay. All right. Well, you might see something around social media or you might see T-shirts or people posting something like this. Gail, got my slide. So you'll see something that says, each of us is an innkeeper who decides if there's a room for Jesus. Uh, sometimes it adds, in our hearts, that's such a thing. While that is true, that's the truth, I'm not denying that. But this morning, I want us to take just a few minutes and talk about a bigger truth. A bigger truth than just saying each of us is an innkeeper who decides if there's room for Jesus. I think the bigger truth, if you can go back, thank you, Gail, if you can go back to the slide, is to tell you, is talking about what Christmas is about. You see, Christmas isn't just about us deciding if there's room for Jesus in our hearts. It is, I'm not denying that, but the bigger picture of Christmas, the bigger truth, is Jesus coming to tell us that there is room for us. See, the bigger truth of Christmas, the reason Christ was born, part of it, was to tell us in a world that has no room for him, that within his kingdom, there is room for all of us. Our Lord and Savior started off with no place, you know, as we say, no place to lay his head. But his mission was to come to tell us that God's kingdom is big enough for all of us. And that includes you. And the way he did that was coming to be with us. He says, I'll show you how big it is. I'll come and dwell with you. Do you know, if you look in the gospel, the biggest the message of Jesus is, repent, the kingdom of God is near. But that's the message of Jesus. The kingdom of God has come near. It isn't some big theological discussion about exactly how this had to happen and why this ha had to happen. Why? I bet that's a question a lot of us has been at, have been asking a lot this past week, right? Why? I, I have. Actually, there's been times I've asked it more than just this past week. I'm sure that you all have too in your lives. You see, here's the thing about Jesus coming to tell us there's room for us. There's room for all of us. And what I mean when I say that, I don't mean just numbers. I mean that there's room for all of you. I mean for the good parts of you, the parts that can smile and rejoice at our kids playing bells. This whole service has been full of joy. There's room for that part of you too. But there's also room for that part of you that's asking why. Why, God? Why, God, did you allow this to happen? Or why? There's room in God's kingdom for all of us. There's room for us that get it, the part of us that gets it. There's room that God's big enough to hold our questions today. Our questions of why them and not me. Sure, many people in our community have asked that question this week. Yes. You know, how does a tornado jump my house and then my neighbor's is gone? 
There's how am I supposed to rejoice this Christmas when so many people I love is hurting and my heart's breaking? I almost feel guilty because I'm, I'm happy that I, I almost feel guilty that I'm going to parties when so many who I love are picking up pieces. Well, the good news is Jesus came for us, for all of us. He says, I can hold you somehow in the kingdom of God. We're able to be happy and hurt. And Jesus is there holding us the entire time, right in the middle of it. Somehow we're able to bring the good and the bad parts of us, the parts that we really wish people would just focus on, the parts that we hope nobody would see. Jesus says there's room for the whole person within the kingdom of God. That you and I belong, not because of anything we've done, but because of what Jesus did. And what he's going to do. So this morning, if you're asking why, I want you to know that's okay. If you're here this morning and you're asking why, God, that is okay. If all you can do is think about God and ask why, or even if you're kind of mad at God, if that's where you are this morning, guess what? Jesus came to say there's room for that too. That even you, even us in our madness, there's room in the kingdom. But you can't stay there. And that's another thing about Jesus coming and telling us that there's room for us. Is that he doesn't, when we come to the kingdom, he doesn't, Leave us where we're at. He transforms us. Amen. So here's what happens, I think. Here's how, what happens to our wise as we dwell more and more with Jesus. As we dwell in the kingdom where there's room for us. What happens to wise, God turns them into reminds of reminding us that he's with us. Do you know that God never in Scripture answers a why question? Does he, Janet? No. No. But what he does say over and over again is that I'm with you. So this Christmas, this day that we've heard the Christmas story, God didn't come to explain to the Israelites why it has seemed like he had been quiet for 400 plus years. Because there's 400 years between Malachi and the book of Matthew. So God didn't come and say, let me explain to you why you haven't heard from me or why you, I've seen silent. Let me explain to you right down to the very last detail. No, God didn't do that then and he's not going to do it now, I don't think. But what he did come to say is, I'm with you. And he took on flesh to tell us that. So if you're asking God why, I encourage you. One, if you can't do it on your own, come talk to me. Talk to Janet. Talk to somebody. But start ask, instead of asking why, start asking God to say, remind me that you're with me. Show me that you're with me. Show me that you're with us. And one way to do that is by being still and knowing that God is God. You know what be still actually means? It means to let go. It means to surrender. So it's surrender and know that God is God. Surrender having to be in control. Surrender having 
to fix everything yourself. Surrender whatever you're grasping for and just let God be God. Let those whys turn into God. Remind me that you're here. Remind me that there's, while there may, that your story tells us there was no room in the end for you, that there's room for me. It's because you say so. And Jesus, you're the way, the truth that came to say through you, there is room for us in the kingdom. And that's what you and I long for is the day when the kingdom will be fully revealed. Can you show the slide again, Gail? Yes, each of us is an innkeeper who decides if there's room for Jesus. Honestly, what I like better is saying, Jesus is our good shepherd who came to tell us there is room for all of us in the kingdom of God. So surrender. Surrender your hearts, your lives to Jesus. Believe that Jesus is the way. That is Christmas. Christmas is about God more than it is about us. And so this morning, if you are here and you're asking why, if you're here and you're hurting, if you're here and you're lonely, if you're here and you've been, maybe it's not even been this past week, but it's been this past year or two years as we've walked COVID, that you're thinking, why, God? I invite you today to surrender. Say, God, today I'm stopping asking why. Today I'm going to start asking you to remind me, let me see that you are here. And for those of us who call ourselves disciples of Christ, that's our job, that's our marching orders this next week and the week beyond that is to be that reminder to people we come in contact with. Amen. Be that reminder that God is indeed with us. Be that reminder that Jesus says they are welcomed into the kingdom, a place where hurt and rejoicing can stand together and be transformed. That is our orders. Let us pray. Gracious God, Lord, help us to be honest right now. Honest about where we're at. Gracious God, if we are asking why today, Lord, we surrender our whys and just start to ask you, God, show us. Show us that you are with us and that you're never going to leave us, never forsake us. God, help us convince us that Christ came for us, that Christ came to tell us that there is room for us in the kingdom, that he is our good shepherd. Now all we have to do is surrender and believe and be still and repent which means to turn back to you God don't let anyone here today leave feeling alone Lord help us to be that reminder to everyone we meet this coming week no matter where we're at Monitor that you are with us because we are your church, the hands and feet. And Lord, we've done great things this last week. We've rallied together. We've cared and loved our neighbors. But Lord, don't let us drift back into normal. Let's not get back to just our everyday lives and forget that there is going to be people the rest of our lives that we meet, not just these weeks and days come as we recover, but the rest of our lives who need to see in us that you are with them. 
So God, help us in our hearts to be mindful of you, how you're working in us, but more importantly, how you're working through us. Because Jesus, you did. You came to a world that did not have room for you, but still doesn't have room for you. To throw your kingdom gates open wide. What amazing love that truly is. And it's in your precious holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. As the offering baskets are passed, would you please stand and join us now for our closing song this morning?
Jesus came to tell us that God is big enough to throw God's kingdom's gates open wide for those who will surrender their hearts and lives to him. So now go forth and be the reminder to somebody you meet this week or to everyone you meet this week that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you.